Hey guys, it's Greedy Devil's Playground here, and welcome back. We've got a special video today, and it's actually an anime review. We're gonna be reviewing and going over everything from episode one of The Promised Neverland. Now, if you haven't heard of The Promised Neverland, I warn you, if you haven't seen it yet, spoiler warning right now. So, you don't wanna get spoiled, click off of this video. <laughs> don't watch it. I, I don't wanna hear anything in the comments like, oh, you spoiled it. I don't care. It's kinda why you click to hear a spoiler or know what you already know or know what you didn't know. So basically episode one started off really, really simple. And man, my opinion of this anime changed by the end of episode one. So basically what happens was episode one, it opens with, you know, the children, it's all sunny, the kids are waking up, they're all happy and excited. And excuse me, I don't really know the characters' names all that well. The only character I know is one's named Norman. He's a really smart kid with white hair. But Episode 1 starts off with the main character, the orange haired little girl, waking everybody up saying, hey, it's time to get up. And, you know, it's it's really, it's a really cute anime. It, it's all, and that's how it deceives you. And you'll know why by the time I'm done. So, it starts off with the kids getting ready for breakfast and everything, you know. The mom, the quote unquote mom comes out and, you know, she's there. Obviously, she looks like the caretaker of this place, but they call her mom. And everything's, it looks so innocent, but there are two things, two things that made me have a certain opinion of this anime. Like, it, that just gave it away what it was going to be about. One, it was the name, The Promised Neverland. Now sit there and dissect that for a hot minute. The Promised Neverland. What does that mean? That means it's, it's a quote-unquote wonderland that you were promised, but it says Neverland, meaning... We were never promising you anything. So it's like, we promised you a wonderland that doesn't exist. So basically, this show seems to be about an orphanage. And the kids, obviously when they're orphanage, you know, the kids one by one get adopted. And they get to new families and everything, and they live out their lives. But, you know, as I was watching this, the title, as well as one thing that you immediately see on the characters. Every kid has a tattoo, a black tattoo with numbers on the left side of their neck curling around almost to the back it's on the, the left side of their neck and it's a serial number that immediately gave it away that something wasn't quite right here something doesn't seem right everything's not what it seems so the title that gives it away and as well as these tattoos everything's fine you know they go have their breakfast and everything then the next scene pops up, the kids, they're outside running around, playing and having a good old time. You know, everything's all hee 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 ha ha and having fun. And you know, but of course, you know, they, at some point they come to this gate. And I'm, I think it was at the beginning of the episode, they were telling the kids that, you know, mom says, never go to this gate because it's, it could, it's dangerous. You should never go past, go near or go into this gate immediately you already know if somebody's telling a child not to do something like that over something that seems really meaningless oftentimes when it comes to an anime you gotta question it like why are you telling me not to go somewhere that looks so harmless you know what I mean and that's the facade that this anime gives you it makes you think that everything's all neat and everything's all innocent and everything but you know cuz it's a wide open field surrounding a seemingly harmless orphanage but cut to the next scene their kids they're playing tag you know and they're playing tag but you know they come across well not yet actually what happened was they played tag and they played the game and they finished the game one of the kids got angry because it's his temperament they say you know he always gets angry about things and he shoots his mouth off so they say he says he poses a challenge he says hey next time we're playing tag and everyone but you is gonna be it huh how, how do you feel about that so next scene they actually do it just that it's him versus everybody and everybody's looking for him and everything and the main character the girl with the orange hair finds the kid Norman by the way is his name they found him by like a really short fence and he's just standing there staring and she just goes with him and she's just sitting there staring at it as well now the, the thing was why are they staring so intently like like they're standing in front of a demon or something truly frightening and then you know she she has this dumbfounded look on her face like she just saw something horrific 
and she grabs the kid and basically saying, ha I tagged you and everything. And then they redo the story and saying, mama said, never go to, to these gates and everything. And then there's one kid and this kid is the kid that they needed who questions everything. He's like, yeah, she says don't go by it because it's dangerous, but we all know it's not true. And that was the crazy part. Because I'm like, I'm with this kid. This kid knows something. This kid, he knows that this is all bullcrap. It's a facade. Now, next, what happens later is, you know, they're um, talking about the, how they want to get adopted and everything. But one kid immediately brings up the topic. He said, hey, you know, all our brothers and sisters, you know, they get adopted and everything. How come they never write us? And they try to play it off. They say, oh, well, maybe the outside world is so awesome and cool that, you know, maybe they kind of just forgot about this place. And, you know, when they brought that up, it made me think, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, if you're all getting adopted and everything, you know, some kids would like to stay in touch with their other, you know, foster siblings, correct? And later, and this was the truly horrifying part that comes up next. And I'll explain why, because it'll be completely obvious why it was horrifying. This show tricks you immediately with a false sense of security. So, one of the little girls, her name is Connie, she's like a little girl. So small, innocent, adorable, the cutest little thing you've ever seen. She has a little bunny and everything, and you know, they're, all the kids are gathered, she's got her little outfit on, like, and her package is all... Her suitcase is all packed up and ready to go. She's got her, her little bunny, you know, she's saying like, wish me luck and everything. But then, you know, they do, they, they pull out the emotional side, tug at the heartstrings, you know, she starts crying. And then one of the other kids, the, the loud mouth kids, he starts crying and then everybody starts crying. And I'm sitting there low key with my heart broken. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. Like, oh, like, don't be sad. You know, you're going to have a new life and everything. And then it happened. The main character, the girl with the orange hair, she comes into the, the dining room where they all eat and you know they pray before they eat. She notices that the little girl's bunny is still on the table. So, and I automatically knew, I knew exactly what was gonna happen. She's gonna bring the bunny to her and find out something she, wa she didn't wanna see. Now, the horrifying part comes right now. They, her and Norman, they say, okay, the, one of the other kids, he has black hair. He's one of the top three kids, you know, in terms of brains and smarts and all that. He says, hey, I still see the light at the gate. They haven't left yet. But here's another side note. Prior to this happening, Mama, she's walking with a little girl. She's humming a tune, and it was really creepy. She's humming this tune, but what just, just makes you so uncomfortable was... The little girl asks, she says, Mom, what tune is that? What are you singing? She hums, looks over at the girl, doesn't say a word. She's got a little smile on her face. She doesn't say a word. She just keeps walking. And as these kids, they're running out. They're running, trying to catch up. And they get to the gate, but nobody's there. And this is the gate that they saw at the beginning that, you know, Mom told them never to go by. So they get there. They're looking around. They're like, okay, where did they go? And they're walking around, they're looking at these strange, like, containers, and they see a truck and everything. And they're talking about, oh, so this is what a truck looks like. I've never actually seen one in person. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then, like, there's this eerie drip of water dripping off of a, a leaky pipe. And it's right by this truck. Now, horrifying part, right now, the main character, the girl with the orange hair, walks around the truck to the back. She opens the back, and we don't see what's inside. All we see is the horrified look on her face. Can you guess what she saw? She opened the back, and she, she took a step back in horror and said, Norman, he looked over, and he said, hey, what is it? So he takes it upon himself. He walks around the truck slowly, and he slowly pulls back the curtain. And what do they see? Connie her lifeless corpse mind you she just left they didn't get too far her body looks like it's already cold and gray like maybe they sucked the blood out of her we don't know all we know is that you know 
They see her body, they're both shocked and horrified at what they've just discovered. Now, what happens next is truly horrifying. They hear a voice saying, hey, who's out there? They immediately hide under the truck. And to their horror, the figure that they see walking around out that door is something out of straight nightmares. You see a hard mask, two eyeballs. The eyeballs are vertical, one on top of the other, and these little holes in the mask. Long white fingernails on long lengthy white fingers and hands with like almost like dragon legs he's stumpy and you just see him licking his lips with his long wet tongue in horror they see him pick up Connie out of the back of the truck he lifts her up in the air and dangles her over his mouth and we, you sit there and you wonder like oh my god he's gonna eat her lifeless body but he says, oh man, I really wish I could indulge and have just a bite. And he dumps her in this, this thing, this vial, this tube full of blue liquid. And the kids, are, they're holding their breath as best they can, trying not to make noise. And they're just like talking and conversating and the kids are just on looking and just complete horror. And then, you know, we later see Mama she does not look like she, how she looks. She doesn't look all innocent and caring and loving. She's got this look of just mischievous deceptiveness. Just the look of someone who just lives off of deceiving and tricking little kids. She doesn't look like herself. Now, as these kids are hiding under the truck, one of, the, one of these demon looking creatures says, hey, I smell something. And he's looking around, you just see his eyeballs, the eyeballs on his mask just darting around, looking in different different uh, directions. And as you're watching, you're 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 sitting, you're watching with anticipation and you're just hoping that they don't get caught. But his eyes are looking, 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 locked. They look at the bottom. He looks at the bottom left corner of the screen. And we know he's looking under the truck. His his lengthy fingers just one by one cascade on the ground and he looks underneath his eyeballs darting everywhere and the kids are gone and then it cuts to the next clip the kids are just running 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 their asses off trying to get away just trying to rationalize what they just saw saying that it couldn't be what they saw it couldn't be you know it's, it's, there's got to be some type of explanation it couldn't be what that it couldn't be what we saw it's not true it's not real and then Norman says, yeah, that's exactly what we saw. That was Connie. No doubt about it, that was Connie. And they go back inside, and the kid with the black hair, who was one of the top three, he's looking at them confused. He's just like, hey, did you catch her? And they said, and Norman just looks at him with just tiredness in his eyes. Like he's exhausted, and he just says, no, we didn't get her in time. Us, the viewer, knows what he's talking about. They couldn't save her, but he doesn't know what they're talking about. And it's just horrifying. So they go upstairs and they hatch a plan. The girl says, we gotta get out of this place. Norman says, don't worry, we will. We'll find a way out of here. And man, that ended episode one. And that anime, that was one of the top animes that just had me fooled for the first half I knew something was wrong and I knew something didn't feel right and I said against my better judgment I said nah I give it the benefit of the doubt but as the, an as the episode went on it was just red flag after red flag after red flag and I just knew something as soon as they went around that truck I just knew that they were gonna find something I didn't know how they were gonna find her body I just knew that they were gonna find a body but man if you if you haven't seen the promised neverland yet i highly recommend you watch it it is nuts it, this is this is gonna be <coughs> this is gonna be a roller coaster of emotions this is this this is spectacular i can't wait to see the next episode 
And hey, if this if you guys want to see me continue to review each episode one by one, please, please let me know. Let me know some way in the comments. Let me know cuz this is the, I want to keep reviewing this. This is this is insane. This story. Man, I can't wait to see what they what they do next, man. Like like are they living in like a, a like a different world or is this the world or is this how the world's always been? How did the kids get there? Where did they come from? How did they get in this orphanage? Who's running this orphanage? Who are those de uh, monster looking guys? So many questions. So many questions. And it's all going to be answered in the next upcoming episodes. If you want me to review these episodes one by one, please let me know in the comments below. But if you like if you like this review so far, like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss a video. And also, by the way, link will be in the description. I re-logged into my Twitter, so I will be posting stuff on there. It's going to be a kind of different account. And I will be posting updates to certain things because I am working on a big project right now. I can't really say what the project is. Just know that when, when it's done and you see it, it's going to knock your socks off. This is something I've been planning for so long and thinking about, but I never got around to doing it. But anyways, with that being said, link in the description. Please, please, please follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description. Now, back to what I'm saying. Like, If you haven't seen The Promised Neverland yet and you don't know if you want to check it out or not and you don't mind episode one spoilers and, you, and you've gotten this far, please, please, please go check it out. I highly recommend it. This anime is nuts. But with that being said, guys, next time, I, oh man.